Okay, this is Professor Hildebrandt. Um, this is for the business statistics uh, first class, and this is going to follow along with material from our textbook in chapter two. So in this video, I'm going to illustrate or kind of go through the steps of how we would create uh, frequency distributions. Um, so keep in mind there's a four-step process. First, we have to determine the number of classes that we're going to organize our data into. The size of the interval is step two. Um, then we'll set up the intervals, and lastly, we'll count up the data and put them into their respective classes. So the first step, again, is to determine the number of classes. And for this data set, we have a total of 20 days of data, and we're told how many oil changes are completed each day. Okay, and I'll show you the data in a minute. Um, so our N here is 20 because that's the total number of observations in our data set. So we're gonna use the rule two to the kth power is greater than N. Um, again, N being 20 here for our data set. So let's just start with uh, four, just pick a number. So try four. Well, if K equals four, that does not meet the rule because two to the fourth power is 16, and 16 is not greater than 20. Okay, so let's go up one, we need a higher number. So let's try k equals five. Well, two to the fifth power is 32, and since 32 is greater than 20, 32 works. So we're going to use five classes to organize our data set. Let's move on to step two. We're gonna determine the intervals. Again, there's a rule we're going to use where I, being the value of the intervals, is greater than or equal to. We're gonna take the highest value in our data set and subtract our lowest value and then divide by K, again, where K equals five, our number of classes found in step one. So looking at my data set, I can tell you that one day the highest number of oil changes completed was 98. We had another day where we had the lowest number of oil changes complete at 51. So our equation is set up at 98 minus 51 divided by five. So we get 47 divided by five or 9.4. Make sure when you're setting your intervals that you round to a whole and easier number. The text suggests doing something that's a multiple of 10 or 100. So in this case, since our um, answer was 9.4, we're going to round that up to 10 and use an interval of 10. Moving on to step three. Now we're going to set up the interval so we can then finalize our frequency table. Since the lowest number of oil changes in a day was 51, we're gonna start our first interval at 50. It's very important when you're constructing these tables to not to realize you don't have to start at a value of zero because that's not relevant to the data set that we have. You wanna make sure your um, information is gonna be displayed in a way that has meaning. So we're gonna start our first interval at 50. Since we're doing intervals of 10, um, we're going to go up to 60. So keep in mind, we should have, by the time we finish, five classes in which to sort our data. So I'm gonna do 50 up to 60 60 up to 70, 70 up to 80, 80 up to 90, and finally for my fifth class, 90 up to 100. The word up to is very important because I started with 50 up to 60. Any day where we had between 50 and 59 oil changes, that will fall in the first class. Um, we want each data value to only fit into one class. So that's why it's important to say up to 60 and then start the next one with 60. So now let's take a look at our data. So here's the number of oil changes completed on those 20 days and I have them ranged um, sorting by increasing values from that lowest of 51 up to the highest value of 98 oil changes in a day. And so I series, you just count. So how many fall between class one, 50 to 60? Well, one, two, three, four, so our frequency is four. 60 to 70, one, two, three, four, five. I put in a five, the next is six, and then two, and then three. You can take some time to pause here if you want and count those up for yourself. Okay, so now we've given, we've taken this uh, listing here of number of oil changes, and we've given it a little bit more meaning. 
For instance, I can see that the most frequent range of oil changes per day is right here in the 70 to 80, and the least frequent is here in the 80 up to 90. But I could probably give it even more meaning if I took this information that's in my frequency table, put it into an Excel spreadsheet, and then allowed Excel to do things like create pivot tables, bar graphs, um, pie charts, etc. And so that's what I've done. So just to show you, this is what the um, quick little bar graph looks like that I pulled out of Excel by putting, again, my frequency table um, into that program. And again, it's showing that we peak here at having 70 to 80 oil changes complete per day. That's what's happening the most often. Um, I also calculated what's called a relative frequency. And to calculate your relative frequency, you take the frequency in each class and you divide by the total number or your N, which in this case was 20. Um, and so for 50 to 60, you'll see that our N um, was over here at 20, or our relative frequency was 20%, 90 to 100 was 15%. So this area here, the, again, the least frequently occurring was the 80 to 90 oil changes per day. And the most frequently occurring is right here at 30% with 70 to 80 oil changes per day. Again, the main purpose of what we're doing here in statistics is showing you how to take data sets, which to a lot of people just look like a jumble of numbers and try to display them in a way that gives them more meaning and brings value to the business.